Baruch HaMaboyim. Thank you for coming. The class tonight will be on um, a term that we call mitzvos in Hebrew. In English, it's commandments. And we know that the Jews on Mount Sinai, they received the Ten Commandments. And at the same time, that included what we call Tariag Mitzvot, 613 commandments. Um, it's interesting that uh, 6, 1, and 3 is 10. So there is a connection between them, even though the Ten Commandments that were given on Mount Sinai to the Jewish people, uh, we call them commandments. They're really a series of Dibros in Hebrew, which really means ten statements. Some people think these were the main commandments. They were just ten statements so within a general term dealing with all 613 commandments. The 613 commandments are broken up into two groups. There is the positive commandments and the negative commandments. There are 248 positive commandments, 365 negative commandments. The 248 positive commandments correspond and are connected to the limbs of the body. The 365 negative commandments are connected to both arteries and veins, but also to the days of the year. There are great Sadiq and righteous individuals that are able to cure diseases that people have because they're really a manifestation of something connected to a mitzvah that a person is doing or not, or not doing. That if they can correct that, many times that's the core of what their uh, disease is about. So that physical manifestation is really dealing with a spiritual deficiency that the person may have on a Kabbalistic level. Now, the, um, it always bothered me that the, there are more positive commands, more negative commands than positive commands. And um, it's interesting, though, again, dealing with as we have in this class with Demetrius' numerical values, that if you take 2, 4, and 8 and you add them, you have 14. If you take 3, 6, and 5 and you add them, they're also 14. 14 in Hebrew is the numerical value of the word yad, which is hand. So each one signifies the right hand, which uh, signifies the kindness of God, the positive commandments, the negative commandments, again, the uh, left hand, uh, dealing with the Vura and Din, the severity of God. You bring the two together, 14 and 14 is the numerical value of the word koch, strength. That by following these commandments, what God has given us is the key, the power to really run, own, and to, to deal with the universe in a very powerful way, a co-op to do so, We're using both hands. One hand or the other doesn't work, you need them both together. Now, all of these uh, commandments, um, you know, people think of mitzvot, they think of a small mitzvot or a big mitzvot. And the truth of the matter is we know the two mitzvahs that Torah gives us um, the reward that we will receive if we do them. One of them is honoring our parents. Very difficult commandment. Either you're young and a little stupid, or you're older and your parents get older. Sometimes dementia or whatever, and dealing with that is a very difficult thing. Um, and yet the reward for that is long life, and again, we say both in this world and the next. So it's, and it's interesting that the myths of Shluch HaKan, if you come upon a bird, bird's nest in the forest in the wild, and you see either eggs or chicks in the nest, you have to send away the mother bird before you take the eggs. And that's for that mitzvah, which happens by accident. If you know it's there and you plan to do it, it's not the mitzvah. It has to happen that you just come upon it by accident. And the Torah says the reward is exactly the same, long life. They're not quite equal. So when people try to major in mitzvahs, the truth is the Torah throws a curve to say you really don't know what is an important myth, what's a myth that gives you a lot of reward, or one that gives you less. But stop and think about it. If you were sitting in a chair, let's start first. If you had a king, and the king asked you to go to war, protect him, protect the kingdom, and you said no, he would put you to death. But what if the king told you, I, you know, I don't like where you're sitting, move over one seat. And you say to him, you know, I'm kind of comfortable where I am. I'm going to stay where I am. Well, guess what? He puts you to death because he gave you a direct command. So whether it's what we perceive to be a small commandment or a large commandment, 
when it comes from God, it makes no difference. It's a commandment from God. And we have a responsibility to keep it, whether we think it's important or not. Not only that, when a person does something big, that's a big sin, a person steals a million dollars, he will have some sort of regret because he know he took, he took a large amount of money from someone or whatever. It's not going to be a perfect sin. Because he can have some sort of regret, or maybe he try, may try to make it better by giving a poor man or an institution a few dollars. It won't be perfect. But if he steals a penny, he'll have no regret whatsoever. And the truth of the matter is whether you steal a penny or you steal a million dollars, it's still the sin, sin of stealing. And the problem with stealing a penny is you will never regret it. You will never do any penitence for it. And when on that day of judgment, when you stand before the heavenly court, you will have a perfect sin because you never touched it. So the truth is those little things that we think are unimportant can really sink the ship. Whereas those things that we think that are big and might be a problem, at least we do feel bad about it. And they actually do some what we call chuba repentance because of it. Now, the 613 commandments are also connected, 6, 3, and 1. And God created the world. On a Kabbalistic level, he took upon himself ten traits. Three of them are traits that are intellectual traits, what we call Chabad, Chachmah, Bina, and Das, of wisdom, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And then he took seven emotional traits. And these seven emotional traits are Chesed, Kindness, Gevura, Severity, Teferis, Beauty, or Truth. And then Netzach, Victory, Hod, Splendor, Yesod, Foundation, and Malchut, Kingship. He's also con connect with the body, right hand, chesed, left hand, vura, trunk of the body, is teferis, right leg, that's up, left leg, hold, uh, uh, male genitalia are, uh, is the soul. And all those are masculine. Malchus, which is feminine, is the female womb, so to speak, that you see, you see it has nothing of its own but gives back a child because of that drop of semen that it receives. So again, the 613 commandments, 6, 3, and 1, are broke up the same way, dealing with the three intellectual traits of God, the six emotional masculine traits, and then the one feminine. And again, 6, 3, and 1 being added is 10. So you have both the 10 sayings which God created the world, the 10 spheros, the 10 traits he takes upon himself, and 10 being a major number, and like we know that a minya, that a group of quorum of 10 men bring down the shekhinah, bring down the divinity of God. But the real question becomes, God is God. So, what's this about mitzvot? Why does God need us to do mitzvot? What difference does it make to him? If we do a mitzvot, does he become greater? If we don't do a mitzvot, or if we do a negative commandment, does he become worse? And the answer is no. And it's no way affects God in any shape or form. But much like a parent, God is that. We pray to God, Adina, Malkina, our Father, our King. So when we do these things, it's kind of like the karate kid, wax on, wax off. What God is doing is he's training us to become more godly. His concern is for us. It's an interesting thing. We, there's a term called Yirat Hashemai, that we're supposed to have fear of heaven. But I saw a beautiful explanation that said that really Yirat Hashemai means the fear that heaven has for us just like a parent cares for his child. And his concern is always about the fear of what will happen to that child in the care. That's what God feels for us, this feeling of your mind of being concerned for us. So all of these mitzvot is really to train us. Why? To go in his ways, to be more godly. And it's... Um, it's interesting that the mitzvot, we have 613 commandments. In reality, you cannot keep them. I don't care how righteous you are. Especially today, there's no temple. So there is a saying in Yeshayah, Yeshayah, uh, Yeshayah, uh, uh, saying that they pay with the, the words of their lips. The, the Hebrew term is supposed to be. But the idea is that today, without a temple, when we say the words that 
it's as if we did the act. So God allows it that. That was the promise he gave to Adam and Eve. That when they say the words, I'll consider it as if they did the act. But still, so even if you can do a missile by saying it, the problem becomes, let's say the part of Jonah, the red heifer, was done nine times in history. That's one of the 613 commandments. It's only done nine times in history. How can you possibly do it? So when an unusual, a special mitzvah happens, all souls connect to that soul that's doing the mitzvah. The concept of what we call a rate, of culpability, of this unity of all of Israel being the Shekhinah, one, one nation together. And we see that today. If someone, if some Jew, Madoff, becomes the biggest thief in history, you didn't take a dime, you feel that. You don't know the guy is, but he was a Jew. Jew wins a Nobel Prize. You don't know what he wanted for. But you feel better because a Jew won the Nobel Prize. So somehow, some way, we're connected as a unit. We're very concerned about what happens in Israel. It doesn't do anything for us here, yet we're concerned. There is that connection of a Jew. So we're connected as one. So this concept of a rape, of accepting culpability for another Jew, and this is why you cannot turn, turn, turn a blind eye when someone does something. You have to help another person. Just like a person toe hurts, he's not going to say, I feel great, but my toe's in big trouble. We're all one body. But what the mitzvahs do is they form us to have a relationship. You can't do tzedakah, you can't give charity unless you're giving it to someone. You can't visit the sick unless you're dealing with another person going to see a person who's sick. You can't make a chasen ikala as a mitzvah to feel better unless you go see them. Everything, a lot of the mitzvah really deal with interaction. And that's what God wants us to do, to be givers, just like he's a giver. It's all about giving. And by giving, we become more godly. So many of the mitzvot are connected with giving and doing something for someone else to make us all one body in this unity of people. And if you're by yourself, you really can't do a lot of mitzvahs. You can't give yourself charity. You can't, uh, can't go in it through a lot of these things. And then it's interesting, the word mitzvahs in the Torah, there are no vows, and matzos look the same. And the thing is, what is a, what's matzo about? Humility. That what mitzvahs do is they teach us humility, they teach us to be godly, to be a giver. If you take the word mitzvah, mitzvot, and you take the tzaddik out from the word, it spells the word mothers, which is death. So the tzaddik that's in the word mothers, when you add it to the word mothers, which makes mitzvahs, it protects us from death. What's the tzaddik? The tzaddik is two things. Number one, tzedakah. And we know that the mitzvah of tzedakah, the Altar Rebbe says in Tanya, is that one mitzvah that will bring the Mashiach, will bring the Messiah. Because when a person gives tzedakah, he gives from what it takes him all the effort to earn. Dam and dumb, money and blood. And a person is giving them himself. In fact, it's such a great mitzvah, you don't make a blessing on it. Something you should do with them, alacrity. And at the same time, the tzaddik stands for a righteous individual. That for a person to be able to avoid death, in life, while a person's living is to connect himself to a tzaddik, someone who's a righteous individual that can be a leader, someone to a guiding light to help him to get through life, to get through this mindful that we call life. It says in the, it says in the Mishnah in Makos that the Holy One, blessed be he, wanted to grant merit to Israel. Therefore he gave them many laws and commandments that the life of true completeness and happiness and harmony is reached in, Juda in Judaism only through the conscious observance of the mitzvot, which is why, which is the way to serve, and the, which is the way for us to attain favor from God. So God really gave us this mitzvot to bring us together. If we know that Obama is the president of the, of the United States, the truth is, even though he's the president and you're a citizen, he doesn't know you even know him. But what if? You get a call from his office and says he's going to be in Novi and he's going to give a speech. Go to, can you go to my guy, pick up his tux and bring it to him? Can you do that? A mundane act. Guess what? When you hand him that tux, he now exists for you and you exist for him. And that's what a mitzvah is. And with every mitzvah, there's another cord that is created between you and God. And that's what it's about, to create that relationship. If you want to be able to have God there on rainy days, you've got to pray on sunny days. And that mitzvah creates that connection between you and God. And that makes him relevant, which is what he wants as a parent, 
and makes you realize that there's someone above you which makes you greater by connecting to the king, by connecting your father the king, ser the, the servant of the king is the king. So again, these mitzvahs were given to us by God to make us better and stronger people. And without even realizing it, just by doing them, we grow and become better. God bless and be well. Have a great Shabbos.